everybody, and welcome to today's um, King of Quotes AMA. Hey, Noble. Hey, Barnaby. <laughs> hey, Noble. Hey, man, I just want to say, like, did you hear that crazy comment that was posted on our, uh, you, you did, you heard it, the, the, uh, the Crypto 10 X, which that video has now gone viral, like it's almost two and a half thousand views. And, uh, oh, really? No, I, I, didn't, I didn't hear the comment. I've been work. I, I've been busy, you know, working, you know, and, and the funny thing is I, I own a couple of meetup groups. So I'll, I've been bit by bit posting in those meetup groups. I own a few of them. I have Los Angeles blockchain. Uh, I've got 720 members. I've got cryptocurrency um, events. I think that's like 900 members. So I've been pumping that video up to these guys as well. So I've been sending it to them and getting them excited about, because uh, these were a lot of abandoned meetups that started in the last blockchain craze and because as a member i went ahead was able to take over ownership and so i'm really uh so yeah i didn't pay attention so what was what was the big uh no, no it was just a funny comment when they somebody said um they just kept on thinking about uh barnes and noble <laughs> <laughs> that that's, a, that's hilarious well they, well there you go they, you know we, Bar, barnes and noble there you go <laughs> <laughs> Kismet. <laughs> hey, so I, it, it never occurred to me. It never occurred to me one time. Nor me either. I know that's why I found it so funny because it was like it's such a famous brand, and there it was it is. staring us in the face. But yeah, it, people, I, don't, I, I always feel a bit weird. We back in Australia, some people, you know, they they call people like me Barnes, but I, I never really liked it. So I was like, Ugh, no. <laughs> um, anyway, say in Australia, that's your nickname. They call you Barnes as a nickname. Well, no, like. Not me. They'd always call me Barnaby because I'm not really like a normal Australian, to be honest. So <laughs> <laughs> but other people. Other, there's not many of us around with this name, but there were some who were called, you know, Barney or Barnes. Or, and you know, I was like, no, that's, that's not me. But anyway, so that's why I'd never thought of it. But then I thought it was funny how with this video getting, you know, yeah, like upwards over two and a half thousand views. So if you search on Ekomi in YouTube, there we are on, the, you know, I think, just in the first 10 or something. And uh, so, yeah, it's really, oh yeah, 2,440 coming along. Yeah, well, geez, that, that means nine people watch since I just literally uh, opened up the browser. I, I mean, I, so when I saw it earlier today, it was 2,200. <laughs> and, uh, and then when I saw it, it was 2,200 earlier when I got back this afternoon, to be honest. So I opened it up and 2200. So maybe that was late yesterday. Maybe my browser had cached and, you know, cache and refreshed. But then when I refreshed it, I, a moment ago, it was 2431. Mm -hmm. So I think it's actually starting to pick up steam. I think you might be, be, be right that it's getting some virality, you know, viralness to it uh, as it evolves. Yeah, it's 2440. Well, and, these and, and I've seen people actually quote us, to be honest, and, and take transcript sections in the uh, Ecomi chat rooms of the things that we, we, we got out of them. But, you know, he, they did their, their big uh, BitBoy thing today. Ah, yeah, but not a video, a just a, a Telegram AMA, yeah? Yeah, it's a Telegram AMA on, on their bit. And I think that that's going to give them a good push. Um, but I think, and, and I've been telling the people, I say, you know, now that we've, we've been getting traction on this particular video, uh, I think this would be great for us to share with other YouTubers mm -hmm. to interview us about King of Quotes, to be honest. And, and yeah, yeah. they'd be open. Because one of the other yeah. one of the other funny comments in this video was they said, Oh, everything was great in the video. Except you guys, you kept on, you know, you talked about your own project. We just wanted to hear <laughs> it was funny. Where, where have you seen the comments? So I'm on the on the webpage. I don't even know where to find the comments. Oh, just down below. Are you, are, you scroll down below. It's got the 50 comments here. And people are like, look, awesome interview. NFTs of the future. Wait, wait. Where, where are you seeing this? On the, on the YouTube page? On the YouTube page. When you go to the Crypto 10X number eight. Okay, hold on. Give me one second. Because I'm looking at Crypto 10X eight. I don't know. Maybe I'm, I'm being over-advertised to or something. Because it's not showing the uh, comments on mine. That's... That's weird because here YouTube always shows comments. So just I don't know, refresh it all. Maybe I turned it off, and I forgot that I turned it off. No, there's no way to turn, off. you can't turn comments off. That's strange. Anyway, so people are saying you know. Like, <laughs> Listen, saying, I'm strange. I'm strange. <laughs> Come on, Barton. <laughs> <laughs> 
Awesome, guys. Thank you so much for the interview. They, they, they made it a, an announced interview in the whole group because they said it was the best interview yet on their, on their whole platform. Mm -hmm. Great interview. So excited. Insane potential. Have to say, this is an awesome interview. Great interview. I mean, I don't mean to keep on. Th th those, those are the most of the comments. Just people. Well, saying, I, well I got hate mail. I, I'll tell you now, I got hate mail from somebody. They sent me a, a message via Facebook saying that uh, it was all lies and didn't like me. No, are you, you're kidding, right? I'm not kidding. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, how ridiculous. I'm like, I'm, I'm just reporting what was going on. How, I, all we did was ask questions. So, you know, there, there's a there's a subset out there. So, you know, I, I always like for them people, things aren't always roses, right? Uh, the reality is, you know, well, some people some people like, that's why we, we, we're, I think we're fairly impartial in our interview, right? We, we, we ask tough questions. We tried to get, you know, what the, the facts were. And at the end of the day, I like the project. So I'm in the project regardless of what happens, right? Were they, was that email from somebody who was pro on OMI, the Comi, or anti it? Which one? I think it may have been anti. You know, they maybe are, you know, the, there's a, you know, there's a couple of people out there and people will find it in Reddit and some other places where they're really anti, you know, uh, Ecomi uh, in the in the BB project because their own projects are not doing well. You know, listen, there's a unique... And this is not to, again, tout Ecomi much more than we have to, and we'll kind of move on to King of Quotes. They, they have a unique ecosystem. They have licenses that no one else has. They've got uh, a tremendous ability of how they burn things. I mean, something like how many hundreds of millions have already been burnt with only, you know, X number of sales of tokens. I mean, and then they're constantly running out of uh, tokens at the at their current central, at their current exchange that has to buy tokens from them to give it to people. So... There's a lot of stuff that's happening in, in with the Zucker company that uh, I think some couple people just don't like. You know, they they, they they feel like they got caught behind the eight ball. Uh, and, I, and remember, I told you, I said, look, this is how I imagined Workplay was going to be when it started. And instead of being anti DV, I joined up right away. Yeah, totally, totally. And I, I don't know about you, but I mean, like you and I, we you know, we're, we're only like our visibility in the whole crypto scene has not been front and center. Like this is making yours and my personalities our names be more well known amongst many crypto people and that's the first time and so i'm just thinking that's also interesting that at that intersection you also got that because i mean as that that's what that's what would start to happen basically you mm -hmm. you stick your hand up in in crypto and actually just on that point like i don't know i mean we've never really talked much about this but you know there's a whole bunch of people you know in, in crypto you kind of got like different groups you've got the the bit boys and the guys who chico crypto and all these people who are like massively famous and uh they'd be definitely getting heaps of hate mail and heaps of love mail whatever it's called fans fan mail um but they uh and then you've got the others like the people who actually taught me originally about crypto who are completely anonymous i don't even know their real names the people who actually brought me in so there's this incredible gamut of people who i guess they actually have like a lot of it and uh and they don't want anybody to know and then there are those who they, they don't mind. They're just like, "Hey, here I am." What's your take on that? You know, it's like listen. That that's kind of my take. You know, I've been in the, you know, you you lecture at Harvard. Come on, yeah. And I'm sure people didn't like what you said. I've written seven books on investing, on trading, and there's people. I remember uh, in the, these are some really popular people. You know, you, you know who brought candlestick trading right to the U.S. Steve Neeson. He was the one who actually made candlestick trading. He brought it from Japan. And he was the one who started documenting it. I met Steve Neeson. I've hung out with the guy who invented Bollinger Bands. I was on the stage with a lot of these guys. And a lot of these guys were really nice throughout the 90s and then the early 20s, 2000s. But there were some people who didn't, you know, who, who said, hey, you know, who's this guy out of nowhere? People like his books and didn't want and, and didn't like sharing the stage with him because uh, it seemed like I came out of nowhere. And so it's one of those things that, you know, you kind of... You have to just do what you can do, right? You know, we, we, I like what we're doing. I like the project. I like what's going on. And I can't be particularly uh, uh, upset that people are going to send me messages. I just thought it was funny that some people were really, uh, you know, really, they have a real strong opinion about what's happening in the NFT space. And I don't really think it's just Ecomi. I think a lot of people are... Are, who have bet so hard on crypto are upset that NFTs are supplanting the conversation. Well, interestingly on that point, remember um, we talked quite a lot uh, last year about that HEX project 
and uh, which is actually completely it blew up a lot in 2020 and uh and the guy who who, who set that up um uh richard he uh, basically he's very down on nfts and so it's interesting like there are some very successful people who yeah you're right they for some reason that they're, they're not liking it maybe they're not liking it because they didn't get in on it fast enough or, or something it's um right and then and i think and i think that's the that's the mi the mix of all of this right is that uh I, you and I have been 100% talking about NFTs for quite some time now. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, we, 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 I called you, what was it? I called you in October. Mm -hmm. It had to have been about, it was either October or September of last year. And I said, Barnaby, I know we need to do a King of Quotes. I said, we need to make it an NFT. And that's when you're like, what, NFTs? And you're like, I don't know what this NFT stuff is. I said, Barnaby? I'm telling you, this is going to be the next hottest thing. King of quotes is, and then you did your research and you go, oh my gosh, I just got the phone. My buddies, Travis and Joel, they said the same thing you're saying about NFTs. We got to team up with them. And then I released the carousel wall cards. We started developing the, and that was actually in November. By the time I, you know, I made them in October, I actually released the first set in November. And then I made a Christmas set that came out in December. So I already was pressing and seeing that this is where the magic of DeFi works. Everyone else thought I was like talking Greek for a while. And then we saw William Shatner in June, last June. William Shatner was already ahead of the game. He put his first NFTs out in June of last year. You know, so so you're right. People who missed it or didn't see it, you know, what can we do? You know, it's unfortunate, but. Well, it's only just starting. Anybody can jump into NFTs now. It's not like the boat has been missed. Like it's all just beginning. That that's the part, but that's the I think people are frustrated because they look at someone like BB and they have a hundred licenses locked up. Like, dang, how do I, you know, how do I get in when when they already have you know all the licenses? They spent two years, you know, nobody else is gonna get DC right now, right? You know, if you if you have a Batman, you know, depending on how their licenses look, now that Ecomi's gotten successful from their license, you and I both know DC is gonna demand more money from the license. That you, you and I get, even if it's a, a slight iteration of what an NFT is, that's that's crazy. But that's only like people just need to get creative. That's only just the beginning. Like like what we're doing, we've made this you know King of Quotes set. And I've just got to say, I've only just known. Did you only like? I'm a bit slow sometimes. Like the whole Barnes and Noble thing, and then over here on Wax, like do you see what it says there? The King of NFTs, and here we are, King of Quotes. <laughs> right. <laughs> So, Listen, we're 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 all in. We 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 created something that that's uh you know on point. Yeah, because if you look at on the on the homepage of Wax Wax.io, everybody, if you haven't got your Wax wallet address, please go do that. Just go to Wax.io, click on Create Wallet, and then after that, head over to Atomic, and um, you just you just connect it up. You just log in with your Wax Cloud wallet, and then start searching for NFTs that you like. Have a look at the King Quotes ones, the Carousel World ones. There's fantastic NFTs up there. You just do just do a search in here. But uh, anyway, so yeah, what we've, everybody hopefully will be getting ours up on this homepage. But because people, they, those guys don't know about us yet. But um, you've got the, the Genesis block, that really cool um, Bitcoin originating uh, NFT set that Dead Mouse, uh, our, our buddies over at BC Heroes, William Shatner, Street Fighter. Oh man, Street Fighter went crazy. Two million dollars in sales. I sent you that article. Two million in sales. That's insane. You know, and, and it's uh, it, that Street Fighter, I think, has solidified the idea of uh, NFTs for major corporations. You know, they had hiccups, they had problems. We get it. You know, if you look back, people were complaining about deliverability and usability and et cetera, but they didn't give back their Street Fighter cards. <laughs> Oh. And even Atari's up there now. Like all these, we're getting, we're getting some big names coming through. I mean, obviously, then you've got like the whole. So what's cool with Wax is that anybody can go over here and launch an NFT set. Like you look at that; it's even got a button right at the top, a link NFT creator. You know, it's it's that's available. You don't get that over on Vivi. They as when you listen to our interview, everybody over here with Vivi, they've made a particular plan. They're not doing that. They're just it's only licensing and. Uh, so it's everybody's sort of doing their own unique things. And then obviously you've even got the whole art world blowing up on NFTs. And um, yeah. like 
Beeple, like his famous artist, like two weeks ago, sold three and a half million dollars worth of artwork NFTs. And and mind you, this was some of the artwork because it is is kind of and I'm not talking about Beeple, but some of the artwork that's sold on uh as NFTs, I, I kind of am suspect of, you know, like is it really gonna have value afterward? Beeple's stuff is high quality. I mean, you can't you, you can't deny that he's got a perspective on pop culture and he's delivering that perspective in a true artistic fashion. I, you know, you're, you like, look at the top, when you were at the top of that page, Barnaby, go all the way top. Yeah. So you've got literally Buzz Lightyear sitting in a jar being analyzed, right? You know, you've got, uh, uh, you know, the skull imagery going on. I mean, but these are really cool images. I mean, you got Mickey Mouse, being a you know expression of the corporation the corporatizing of mickey mouse there's some deep stuff going on in this oh, imagery man this is they go look at that trump eating a burger on top of a in the train the train wreck that went on that, right these are all the virus it's the virus all over the trump train exactly right isn't that isn't that i mean that's art it, it's real art it doesn't happen to be a painting it doesn't happen to be in your room or house but mm -hmm. seriously you know mickey mouse consuming our children right I, I just man that was really intense i didn't know what i was clicking on this guy's got some seriously anyway so that, yeah he just as an example though like as a very creative digital artist um three and a half million dollars in in a weekend with his artwork yeah and and it's great and it's great artwork i can't i will i i there's nothing net of negative i could say in fact i when we get to the point of where we're successful, I would definitely own a people. I could see what what the appeal is. You know, it's a, it's real art. There's not a, there's no question in my mind that he's got a he's got a point of view, whether you appreciate it or like it or don't like it, right? And the point of view is front and center. And and it's and it's great. It's a it's a great mind bending point of view. And so people can people. I mean. We love NFT. So like some of this artwork is like, you know, you've got like open C as uh and, and wearable. There's a whole bunch of these art um collectible marketplaces. So they're like what we've got happening over on Atomic. Uh with the uh with the king of quotes. But then you've also got um these these places like open C for for artwork and uh I mean, yeah, it's it, this is Ethereum. So that's that's another really big difference. The stuff that people was doing and that these artists are doing, they're selling with Ethereum, and they're much much smaller limited editions. Like you know, like in the you know dozens or maybe even one, two, five, ten, maybe maybe a hundred max or something. Uh, and they have much higher gas fees. Basically, they have the gas fees for doing the transactions, which you don't have over on Wax. So that's one of the reasons why we were also very excited about launching. Uh, over on wax was but, you know but we might as well tell everybody and i'm going to talk about it tonight so these same 10 cards we're in the middle of creating an ethereum version of these and we're going to release those on open c as their own artistic expression because so i think that we've, we've done a good job mm -hmm. of presenting a card set that will promote both our uh, wax as well as uh really get the the messaging out about history is relevant. I mean, that that's, you know, if we were to pick an artistic message, I think that we have is that history is relevant today. You know, we, we really keep it super simple and, and that's really what we want to do. So we'll, we'll be posting and putting ourselves out on open C. Uh, uh, in addition to that's going to increase the demand for these older cards, the set cards that you guys own right now, to be honest. It's going to have a effect. It's going to basically bring people's attention over to the wax platform. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we're going to let them know that it's available. It's a game that's available on Wax. We we're not going to build the game on Ethereum because you know burning, you know five Ethereum ten thousand dollars to play the game is not going to go over well for anybody. But <laughs> like that's having really, a yeah. good. We, yeah, we could never actually make the game that we want to make and the staking and all of that the way we want to do it um, on Ethereum. That's why we're basically doing it. Uh, on, on the Some people have tried. Some people, you know, don't get us wrong. There are games that are being played on ETH and playing on Ethereum and they're using fractions of Ethereum. But I believe that the experience for the players is horrible because the gas fees start kicking in. 
Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes just to send a hundred bucks, it can be eighty dollars in gas if it's the wrong time of day. So you know, you're you're literally paying twice as much. And th- and these are the issues. This is why you know that again, that not to plug anybody, but you know the ADA protocol is is gaining traction. This is why EOS is starting to build NFTs in addition to the Wax platform. People are just starting to realize that the gas fees, especially if you want mass market adoption, are they're untenable. There's no way to have games in collections in, excuse me, in a way on that platform that allows you to do actual gaming. Absolutely. But we're just sort of sharing with you guys that this um, NFT universe is, uh, is rapidly growing. Uh, so there's whole marketplaces for, for Ethereum. So basically you're going to want to get uh, set up also just with, with Ethereum um, but, uh, because you may want to get these new sets that we're launching. Uh, very, they'll be very, very limited. They'll be quite different. But the whole point of it actually is to increase the value and the attention over here. Um, so, you know, what's really cool with Wax is that you can just go and set up a wallet instantly uh, over at Wax.io and it's quite different if you haven't already done it. Um, I mean, so that, that's the simplest way to really probably even enter into crypto is just coming over here and getting started. Whereas with Ethereum, you're going to want to download and, and set up MetaMask to have this little plugin over here. And, and so essentially, that's what you that's what you need to do for working with, uh, with anything with I Ethereum. I see somebody's been buying a bunch of uh, Ethereum NFTs. You, you drained your MetaMask wallet. <laughs> Wait a minute, are you the guy who bought up all those beeples? You know, you're trying to play real nice and, and quiet about it. <laughs> I'm rich, man. Come on. <laughs> Here we go. So you're going to want to get over to metamask.io. And, uh, oh my good, look at that. Look at that price difference there. Like they need to update this website. Look at that. 1.298 for $288. Oh my gosh. You, you, 1.29 ETH, right? Is what? Uh, one uh, two two thousand thirty two thousand twenty three hundred bucks or something like that now. Yeah, so it's actually ten. It's it's about ten x on top of that. Uh-huh. Yep. And so that was that would have been done um only like six months ago, seven months ago. Yep. So that's how much we're seeing this whole crypto market like really blowing yeah, up. And I get these messages. You know, like people call me and says, "Well, what do you think? Is it going back? Is it this? Is it that?" You know, it's like asking someone. You know. Or when Web 2.0 started, is Amazon going to be successful? You know, based on the history when Amazon started to push, the, the answer would have been, well, Web 1.0 failed, but Web 2.0 is actually in full swing. And so the likelihood of, of, of Amazon being around is greater. And I think that's where I come from this point that, you know, everything is already, you know, failed, had major collapses, et cetera. Now, People are really getting comfortable. Well, basically, they it, all these like Bitcoin, et cetera, these these major cryptos, they they have these massive pumps, and then they go through this um, like sideways. Consolidation. This is called consolidation. They have a yeah. consolidation period. And so, in that consolidation in Bitcoin now could have a twenty thousand dollar range for all we know, because it took like another two years for it to get back up to 20 grand. It took like, I don't know how many days, weeks for it to get from 20 grand to 40. And then it got to basically 60. So it went $40,000 in the last two months above its previous high. And so, you know, people saying it's not, I mean, like it's okay, it's 48,000. It's just shy of 50 grand. It's just shy of like, you know, it's previous high of 60. So it's down, you know, like it's, like you know, seven percent of the, the seven last seven days. Like Bitcoin can move that much in a day sometimes. Up and this down. is the this is the so my question is, and this is where we really have to look at it. Will Bitcoin be back at zero? Answer is no. When you have major banks and you have major institutions buying up Bitcoin as their reserve currency, it's not going back backwards. You, you, Goldman Sachs wouldn't be making investment. Uh, Tesla wouldn't have bought $1.5 billion worth of Bitcoin if somehow they thought it wasn't going to hold value. There are so many more smarter people than us in the room. And these guys are doing their analysis and making their acquisitions. Have they been wrong in the past? I always look at the Orchid example, right? Or excuse me, the Tilt Mania. Tilt Mania made it almost impossible for anybody. And But the reality is people still made money during the Tilt Mania. <laughs> entire fortunes were made and people bought homes and acquisitions people made 
real world profits from the tulip maker. They did, but I think people sometimes do, they refer back to that. And it's, I think it's, it's a mistake that in terms of like comparing, like saying Bitcoin's a bit like the tulip mania back then. I mean, it was very, very localized. Some of the major differences, it was extremely localized. Now we've got something that's worldwide. You know, billions of people can easily participate. We've never, basically, it's like the genie's out of the bag. And, uh, you know, it's, you know, I saw this really, um, really funny video the other day. It's very short. Maybe I should share it with the group, but it was, um, this, these comedians, this sketch, and they were, it was like set like um, two, 2,000 years ago. And there was this little store and somebody's walking up uh, with this, uh, with like a little rock, but it was gold. And, uh, and they, they, they had this little gold rock and they were like trying to convince the store owner to accept gold. And the guy was like, what can I do with it? And they said, you know, well, you know, you can, you can just hold it. And he said, well, can I eat it? No. Can I, can I put it, can I make shelter out of it? Can I do, what practical functionality does this gold have in my life? And the person couldn't find any. And they said, just go away and bring me a chicken. I want to have a chicken and then I'll give you some, you know, some. <laughs> and uh, so it was just a really funny sketch to kind of show that originally people always have to be trained up. And now nobody would question the value of gold, but there would have been a time potentially thousands of years ago when people were like, what can this gold thing do for me? Are we in a similar place right now with Bitcoin? Well, we, are. we are. I mean, how many people reject, have rejected uh, Bitcoin for so long? And, and then in the meantime, in their rejection, the price has skyrocketed. Yeah. I, I have. I mean, I'll, I'll be frank. I bought it at 300, went to 1800, the same price as gold. I said unequivocally, no one will ever look at Bitcoin having the same value as gold. Wow. Now, No, are you still there? I'm not sure if we, uh, did we lose you? Hmm. Hey, back again. Yeah, the Bitcoin gods got pissed at me because I said it wasn't going to be more valuable than gold. Kick me right out. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you know, but to, just to finish that point is that this is just a crazy time that we're in. And, uh, you know, the idea that Bitcoin is going to be 300,000, we have to start suspending our belief and then just trading exactly what we see on the market. Well, don't you find it just fascinating how how quickly we start relating to a new price point as, as normal. Like, like, you know, like 12 months ago, Bitcoin was five grand. It's 10 X to 12 months, basically yep. something around that much. So but now we're just taking 50 grand. It's like, Oh, that's normal. If it drops below that, we're like, ah, this is, <laughs> how can that, it's so great. Yeah, the same thing with Ether, Ethereum. You know, what one Ethereum is the equivalent of, you know, one bar of gold now. I mean, there you come go. on. And and I just told you my my feeling was that I didn't think Bitcoin was going to be worth as much as gold. So basically, Ethereum is cheap. You know, there used to be you know gold and silver have a parity of each other, and it's about ten percent silver is about ten percent the value of gold. Yeah, Ethereum has been doing the same thing with Bitcoin. So if you're looking at this, that means Ethereum is really on sale, that there's an arbitrage opportunity here, that Ethereum really should be 5,000 a coin if you were to keep the, the typical 10% ratio that exists. Right. We're also seeing massive changes here, like Binance is just like, like 50, 46% in a, in a week. And like XRP has been at the number three position for the entire crypto period, all these last five years or whatever. It's now been pushed down. Binance is above that. Cardano is above that. Polkadot. Mm -hmm. People don't even, I bet some people don't even know what these are. Look at like Uniswap, this, this DEX. Basically, um, 
you've got these DEXs, these decentralized exchanges like Uniswap, just mm -hmm. completely crushing it, just taking it up. And uh, that- You're sitting right next to a, a joke coin. Dog coin was never meant to be traded. You know, the, the, one of the founders is always pissed off about it. He's been pissed off since the beginning. He writes articles talking about how ridiculous it is that dog coin has any value. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, and because it was just a joke coin they built at random. Wow. And like, like EOS, basically EOS was a top five coin like a few, a few years ago. And now it's number 22. These coins can move around and for, Tron was 14, 15. Things can move fast in this space. Big, oh, big no, they that can. They will move fast in space. They really, there, there is a coin that you and I have never heard of that could be number one tomorrow. Well, like there's this one over here, like um, th these DEXs, like, you know, they're, they're really, they're really um, moving. So, I mean, you need swap people should, you know, start getting familiar with that because you know, that's where you can um, exchange on, on Ethereum, the whole um, alcohol, which is where we're going to be, we're getting listed up there. Uh, that's, that's already happened, that, that, that approval and dust. That's where you're going to be exchanged. So basically Alcor is the wax EOS version of Uniswap. So that's what people um, really want to start coming, getting familiar with. But any swap- Is Alcor on there though? I mean, I don't even think Alcor is listed. Do, do they even have a token? I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. But, yeah, I don't think Alcor even has a token, to be honest. Um, basically, this one is it's called AnySwap. And I was, I was writing about it last year. And uh, on the same day that Ecomi blasted off, when this was only 20, 20, 20 cents mm -hmm. a month ago. But because AnySwap is a, is a joint exchange, it's going to be a facility for basically trading between Ethereum and, and multiple chains. Basically, EOS, it's, it's like... So there's some really innovative tech happening here where basically you're going to be able to exchange not only like on Uniswap, everything has to be Ethereum. Over on, over on Alcor, everything has to be EOS or, or WAX. There's going to be some of these new exchanges like Uniswap that are, for all, that, that, that are combined blockchains. So I think that's going to be very cool for people once they start tapping into that. And uh, yeah, so if you, I mean, have it start playing around over there on, on Alcor and well, actually, how's the dust going? Are we, um, is that all? So I, ping, I ping them today. Usually they get it started late at night. Uh, on Thursday night, they start uh, syncing everything up. So I pinged them earlier today. Today is the day that they should be getting us all synced up for the dust. Uh, yeah. And so we'll see. Because this is where people are going to be able to basically start playing with their dust if they want well, to. Well, yeah, they'll be able to sell it, trade it, swap it the whole night. And they'll be able to get more uh, wax and, and everything. So you just click on the wax um, icon up here for the protocol and then connect your wallet. You need to click your, click your cloud wallet over here. And then from there, it's just going to, you know, you just log in with your cloud wallet and, uh, and you'll be away. Mm-hmm. With your dust, so that's going to be a lot of a lot of fun. So no, it's we're we're you know there's some stuff there's so much stuff happening, and it's you know what we always talk about it in the industry: hurry up and wait, right? So we hurry up, we get all the stuff done, and then we're waiting for all the stuff to percolate. There's like news that we're sitting on. Did they even email, did he send you a message yet? Yeah, there's, it's happening uh, tomorrow. There'll be a, we should have that that other announcement coming out. Okay, so tomorrow we're having a, a big announcement. Uh, is it a press release? What are they doing? Well, I don't know. I think at least it's a tech integration. So, um, well, we've actually got two because to, no, tomorrow we've got the whole we've EOS got the Nation. EOS Nation. Yeah, they they said we could talk about them, but the, this other group that we're working with asked us not to say anything. So there's and, going to be two. Uh, there'll be two announcements for tomorrow. One is that yeah, EOS Nation is talking about us to their whole database and everything, which is going to be fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, oh, by the way, I mean just in, in this call, in this half hour, our our packs, our KOQ packs have already gone up by a dollar. They were 30, 38, now they're thirty nine. So it's like the wax price is is, is on the way back up. So, but so tomorrow is going to be cool. We're going to have these uh, these very cool announcements. Yeah, I mean, we got a bunch of cool announcements, and then you guys got a little sneak peek of us even talking about the, you know, now that we've gotten through some of our other work, 
uh, that we that we've been doing. Uh, we've got more fun stuff coming along the way too. So, um, you know, I, all I can tell you guys is uh, thanks a lot for being supportive and being a part of what we're doing right now. You guys are at the ground floor of what's happening. Uh, you know, with you know what we're doing and how we're doing it, and you know, all I can say. I'm excited. I said, you know, there's just more work to do and there's more stuff to do, but uh, Barney has been doing a great job. I think I've been doing an okay job of getting stuff done and you guys, we've been delivering on you guys. And so we're delivering for you guys. Uh, so just, just keep in mind that um, we're, we're understaffed, overworked, and we're doing our best to deliver and help all you guys out uh, as much as we can. So bear with us if there's any kind of things that fall through the crack. It's not intentional. We're not upset. Uh, we're not ignoring you. There's a lot of stuff, you know, a lot of little moving parts, and we're trying hard to get to the next phase because the big, real official launch. Um, I've already talked to uh, one of my friends. She's a publicist with all of the major uh, online influencers, both children and adults, and she's loving King of Quotes. She loves Carousel World, and so I'm coming up with a way to integrate what we're doing with their influencers. You know, we saw Paul Logan just do his opening of packs for Pokemon and they went off like gangbusters. And so there's other people who are like Paul Logan that she's attached to that are up and coming a few hundred thousand that we want to give them packs, digital packs to do um, openings and start creating a buzz. So there's things that are in the works that I believe are, are going to be both successful and exciting with how we're going forward. Totally. Hey, so we're, we're still going to keep up with this little um, tradition of reading out one of the characters a day. I thought we'd pick an, uh, another freedom character. We've got um, Eleanor Roosevelt. So let's just, um, because she's in this um, world. Nobody fight. knows who she is. Who's heard of Eleanor <laughs> Who's Eleanor Roosevelt? <laughs> she was the, uh, an American political <laughs> figure, diplomat, activist. I know you know who she is. Uh, she was the first lady of the US uh, in from 1933 to 45. So that was like 12 years. She was the longest serving um, first lady during the Democrat, her Democrat husband, um, Franklin D. Roosevelt, FDR, for the four terms in office, making her the longest serving first lady. Eleanor Roosevelt served as United States delegate to the United Nations from 45 to 52. And President Harry S. Truman later called her the first lady of the world in tribute to her human rights achievements. She actually set up the uh, whole human rights section on the UN, which was incredible. And following FDR's death in office as president in 1945, she remained active in, political, in politics for the last 17 years of her life. So she was completely dedicated to making a difference wherever she went. An extraordinary person. And she has, you know, amazing quotes. That's why we put her into the game. Some of the most po positive quotes, I think, in the game, the ones that make you feel really good, uh, you know, basically, they come from her. Um, so the giving of love is an education in itself. Uh, you must do the things you think you cannot do. The future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. Uh, we are afraid to care too much for fear that the other person does not care at all. Interesting. Um, well, well, I mean, that's, that, that right there is, I think we're all suffering from that, right? I mean, that right there is like the gestalt of what's going on with COVID and, mm -hmm. and you know, the idea of who's wearing masks and who's not wearing masks and, I mean, like that, that hits home, that, that quote by itself is very prescient. Absolutely. And how about this one? What you don't do can be a destructive force. Very powerful. Absolutely. We, we, we saw that, you know, you know, people, well, no matter where you fall politically, when governments don't act, it's detrimental to the nation. Absolutely. And no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. How about that? There we go. That's what Eleanor Roosevelt said. So, another great, another great talk, another great AMA with between us. Absolutely. And uh, everybody, thanks again for being part of everything we're doing. King of quotes. Uh, jump into Wax if you're not there yet. Head over to Wax.io, then over to Atomic, and just start diving into this world of NFTs and start diving more into crypto. The more you learn. In fact, one of the great things about NFTs, it's going to give you an opportunity to start learning about this whole industry. Whatever's your gateway into this, just jump in. Yeah, like I said, we're, I'm excited for you guys. 
it's a journey that is not going to end. These NFTs are going to get more and more valuable. And I believe the core of it is when we're, when Barmy and I have pack number 25 under our belt of you know, quotes that we've released out, all of these early quotes will gain so much more value. You know, you, you know at this point, it, it, it's, it, it'll be at our discretion when we decide to stop putting out packs of quotes. And the funny thing is that'll have nothing to do with you guys. Your quotes won't disappear. The game won't disappear. All this stuff is built on the internet uh, uh, using blockchain. And so the battles will still be able to go on, the gameplay, the swapping, the trading, long after Barbie and I lose interest. You know, we're, we're, you know, we're developers, we're founders, you know, let's be sincere. We like creating new stuff, but we may be moving on to the next creative. And uh, this game and these things will function and value will grow regardless of where we're at in our lives. One, one quick, like maybe a little final point on, on what you're saying there. On a very tech geeky side, the reason why these will, won't disappear is because they're, they're hosted up on this whole blockchain system called IPFS, Interplanetary File System. It's crazy. And what it, but it's a fancy name for a whole new blockchain initiative for web hosting, which means normally you have to, you have to store these files, these images up on centralized servers, like on Amazon or, or your web hosting company. Not this. Everything here, all these images, they're directly stored in the blockchain and shared amongst a crazy number of computers such that it could never be turned off. Nobody can turn off what we've set up here, as you were saying. Yep. So until tomorrow, everybody, have a great day. And thanks for being part have of Kingdom. day and another great EMA, guys. Look forward to talking to you guys soon. And uh, if you missed today, enjoy the replay.